Hi, I'm Anna Wall Trades, and today we are tackling a really fun DIY project. We are going to be building a raspberry trellis for the farm, and this can be a project that you scale down or scale up, and it will basically be the proper support system that you need to have raspberry plants that get enough sun, enough airflow, and can produce a high amount of fruit. I get my hands dirty, they show me no mercy, so I just keep working. The strength from this trellis system comes from these half lap joints. We cut a mortise in both pieces and then they fit together perfectly, creating a rock solid joint. You basically need a square. You want to clamp your work down, obviously, so that it doesn't slip while you're working. You need a circular saw and a chisel. So what we're going to do is cut the outside two lines and then we're going to cut out a bunch of the waste and chisel it out. Then you can just put the two together. So safety glasses, ear protection, Tuck in all of your strings and wires. We're going to check our depth and make sure that we're halfway down because when you go to put your trellis together, you want it to seat perfectly square. I like to use a square to guide my saw, especially for these crucial outside cuts, because that will make sure that I cut really squarely. So I want to make sure that I'm going to cut just inside my line. So I'll cut my other line now. And these are the only two that you want to be super, super precise. And then once you've got those, you're basically just going to cut a whole bunch of other little lines. Of course, we would never do any of this with our fine woodworking chisels. Construction chisels, different game. All right. So one important thing, once you've got the mess of the mess out of there, when you're chopping a mortise, you want to come from both sides and meet in the middle. So that's going to save us from having blowout on the opposite side. So I'll clean up this side up to the middle first. And with a nice sharp chisel, I should just be able to pare it away. And if we go right down to those saw lines, then we will know that we are at our final depth. And this isn't fine woodworking, but there's no reason that even in our outdoor woodworking, we can't practice good woodworking techniques. Another thing too, when you're using a chisel, is that you always want to keep both hands behind the chisel. I don't ever want to see anyone paring away where the chisel could slip and cut off their finger. And now the moment of truth. Ooh, a nice tight fit. We like that. Where's my persuader? All right, so once we've got the half laps cut, we put them into their final resting place. And ideally, they fit snug enough that you get a little tap tap out of it, but this wood is still pretty wet, so it's going to dry anyway. So we'll be just fine. <laughs> Woo! Perfect fit. So here's all of the assembled posts for the trellis. We are going to mark where to set them in the concrete, and then we are going to make sure when we're placing them to put them opposing. So we've got these half lap joints, one opposing the other, so any pressure is pulling things together, not pulling them apart. So literally perfect then. Oh yeah. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just as a primer here, we have set up this cross beam here 
and we want to find where the center of the post will be in the hole. So we're using the plumb bob to weight down and basically give us a visual thing to where we can center the post. Of course, we want to dig the post only, uh, of course we want to dig the hole only once, so you want to be a little careful about how you dig it. But sure enough, this is in the right spot for what I estimate to be the center of the post. We've got a depth stop measurer post here anyway. Perfect, so depth is okay, placement is okay, we're ready to put it in concrete. It's the most precise raspberry trellis that will ha ever have existed. Now nobody move. Don't bump me, don't talk to me. So once this post is set and fully level and plumb and all that jazz, we just have to repeat this process five more times. So what you're seeing here is high tensile wire and this goes along this whole row and we've got it terminated with a little ugly thing here that will get prettier as we do it but it's connected to a turnbuckle with an eyelet here and a hook on this side and this is going to hook in here and we will be able to, in theory, you man. This is going to hook on here and we'll be able to tighten the whole system by turning the turnbuckle which will allow us to really really just snug this up and bring up the raspberries as we tighten it. So you've got yours there? Yes ma'am. Alright perfect. <laughs> Collected some foliage. We'll bring this up here. That's good to go there. This is my bottom one, yep. So once we've got all this kit installed here, we have the room for the roots to grow basically in between here. The stalks to grow up and start to widen out and create their foliage here. And then here, there's plenty of space to reach in and pick the fruit. So here's the center post and we have drilled and pulled the wire through here and terminated it there on the end. One cool thing about this is that we have two layers here. This is, it looks a mess right now, but it'll be awesome once we've kind of encouraged all the raspberries to grow where they're supposed to. But we've got this one at about five feet here, and then the one back there at about six and a half feet. So the raspberries in front, we will keep kind of shorter and then the raspberries in the back will still be able to get plenty of sun exposure. So this is the beginning of the line. We've got the eyelet installed here, the thimble, and the wire rope clip for the end termination here. And that basically just keeps your wire from getting kinked and undue strain, which might cause it to snap. The last step was to anchor the post to the ground so that the tension from the trellis pulling that way would not actually pull the trellis over. So same thing again, turnbuckle and hook all the way down to a piece of rebar stuck down in the ground with a hole drilled in it so we could feed the wire through. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel in that way. If you'd like to support me in other ways, you can find my Fluffy Crew t-shirts on my website. I will also put the link for my Patreon below. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired, and excited to get outside and to try things with your own hands as well. Cheers. Hi, dear hole. You know what would be great is if these weren't in the way. <laughs> I was not built for this.